Hey, Caleb. Hey. And uh, hello, everyone on the Rethink Con. Happy to be showing off Snady Cloud today. My name is Caleb Lloyd. I'm the Director of Engineering for the Snady Cloud and Control Plane products. And what I've got for you today is just a quick screen share. I'm going to demo an app, uh, building just a very simple application uh, on Synadia Cloud, but show you some of the the features that it has uh, that a building, you know, multi-regional, um, multi-tenant applications in NATS, extremely simple, and um, show you how you can get started for free with that today. So let me go ahead and share. All right, uh, and up here I've got Synadia Cloud. So this is my personal team in Synadia Cloud. This is exactly what you're going to see when you log in. Um, but just to demo a quick application that we can build, let's say I've been you know, assigned as an enterprise architect to build a, a e-commerce application that receives orders on a cloud app and then has to ship the orders to a warehouse. And then obviously I want to get the warehouse shipments back in my cloud app. Um, and let's just assign some regions to this. So let's say my my data center I'm running in the West Coast, um, my e-commerce app's gonna run in the West Coast, but, but my warehouse is all the way on the East Coast. So, you know, when you're thinking about um, traditional infrastructure, this, this could be like extremely difficult to build. Uh, you know, obviously we've got a couple different locations where we need data here, um, but, but let's look how that would uh, see how that would look on NGS uh, via Synadia Cloud. So, uh, first thing I'm going to start with is is two accounts. So accounts are basically isolated from one another unless things explicitly share. So I'm going to switch over to a team. I've already pre-set up a few things in this team. So I've got my two accounts here. I've got my cloud and my warehouse account. Um, now, in our cloud app, we want to basically just publish orders. Let's imagine we have an e-commerce website. It's taking in orders and, um, you know, every time it takes an order in, we want to see that published to a NAT subject. So I'm going to spin up some background traffic, um, just publishing orders to this order subject. So if I drill into my cloud account, you can see um, I had this running earlier, but now you can see I've got traffic starting to ramp up again there. Uh, one of the first neat things I can do in Synadia Cloud is inspect this traffic. So I am using the NAT CLI to generate this traffic, uh, but it, I can actually drill into these connections. I can see where these connections are coming from. I can see if, you know, are there any subscriptions? Um, some of these are published only connections, so you're not going to see subscriptions, but we should see at least one of those here. I've got a subscription on orders. So I'm publishing on the order subject, and that was my first task. Um, so, you know, my e-commerce uh, e-commerce app is publishing on orders, and my next task here was to actually record the orders that are coming through the system. So for that task, I'm going to go over to Streams. This is, uh, you know, a UI for Jetstream that's in Synadia Cloud. Uh, and since this cloud app is running in the West Coast, I'm going to create a stream. I want to capture orders. Uh, the subject I'm publishing orders on is just simply orders. And um, let's see here. I'll go ahead and make it three replicas. And I'm going to select a cluster because I'm on the West Coast. So I want to make sure that this uh, you know, data is captured in the West Coast. So I'll do an a AWS uh, US West 2. So here, here's all the options. Basically, NGS, the underlying NATS cluster here, it's a it's a global super cluster. It's got uh, you know multiple NAT servers in multiple clouds in multiple regions. So um, you can just uh, if you don't select a cluster here, it's going to by de by default it's going to pick the one you're closest to. Uh, it does that with with GeoDNS, but if I want to explicitly set a cluster, I can do that as well. So I'll go ahead and create that order stream, and then when I click into that, you can see I'm already gathering messages on that stream. So perfect. Um, all right, next in the list of tasks, that order stream, that needs to get over to the warehouse somehow. And remember, the warehouse is a completely separate account. Uh, it could be a completely different set of developers developing applications there, but I want to share these orders with those developers. So I'll go ahead to exports. 
and I'll pick a stream here to export. I'll export my order stream. And uh, we do want to make that private. Remember, NGS is a, uh, a multi-tenant cluster. So if we make it public, that would be like, you know, a service we, we potentially want to share with the world. Uh, if we're doing stuff internally, we'll, we'll keep those private. Um, and then I'm going to pick which account I want to share that private export with. So I'll share that with the warehouse. Uh, and then I've got a quick link just to click over to the warehouse here. So you can see the warehouse. Uh, I'm now on the imports tab of the warehouse. So I exported from the cloud account and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to import those orders into the warehouse. Uh, I'm going to create a mirror of that. So we'll just call that orders mirror. Here's our external uh, stream from another account. And since this warehouse is on the East Coast, I am going to place that mirror on the East Coast. I'm going to do three replicas again. Of course, I want everything to be HA. Uh, so I'll create that mirror. And uh, you can see as I click into there, I'm already getting all of the orders coming from that cloud application mirrored down in my warehouse. Perfect. Uh, so let's go to the next step here. Um, now I've got to start sending out shipments. So again, I'm going to just um, kind of set up some demo traffic here uh, occurring in this warehouse application. Um, so, you know, if I go to account connections here, you can see uh, I am subscribed. I'm, I'm, I'm publishing my shipments. So I'm pulling in orders that are coming down. And um, as they're shipped, I'm publishing on shipments. Again, um, you know, just to go through the same drill, except the other direction, I want to uh, capture a stream of shipments. And I want to use that subject shipments. Um, again, I'm on the East Coast in the warehouse, so I'm going to place that in East Coast. And from this warehouse, I'll go ahead and export that stream. I guess I already had that set up from a uh, previous iteration of this. So I'll go over to the cloud here um, on my imports. I'm already importing that shipment stream. And you, uh, now I can go mirror in that external shipment stream. And that'll be a shipments mirror. I'll put that in the West Coast with three replicas. And then when we click on that, I'm already getting that live data about what's being shipped out. So this is uh, obviously a very quick way to set up, you know, th there would be real applications behind this. Uh, there may be different people developing these applications. So this cloud team, um, you know, if, if we go to some of the advanced features, um, any any account that has collaborators enabled in Cinea Cloud, that's going to be any of our paid accounts, is going to have the ability to invite collaborators to a team. Uh, I am the owner of this team, I'm the team administrator, but you can imagine I may have like an e-commerce team that I only want to have access to this cloud account. Um, so in that case, I could go to settings, access, and I could invite the folks that are part of my organization that are part of this organization developing e-commerce apps, you know, uh, e-com, a user, plug in their email and send them an invite and they would get access to Synadia Cloud, but they'd be limited to using this cloud account. Likewise, if I had, you know, uh, developers that were responsible for developing warehouse applications and I only want them to be able to, uh, you know, manage anything inside of this warehouse account, uh, I could do the same thing there. So um, Synadia Cloud has all kinds of uh, additional features here. You can see I just demoed today um, kind of imports, exports of streams, the connection graphs. Uh, it also has full user management for making application credentials. Uh, it's got the ability to do signing key management with groups as well. So uh, tons of features here. It's uh, completely visually driven and it is uh, also completely API driven. So like anything that you can see in the user interface here can be done programmatically with API. Uh, and 
that will pretty much enable you to do like uh, visual operations where needed, but if you have automated operations, uh, you can use scripting. It's got a Go client library that you can use. Um, so, so tons of new functionality here. If you already have NGS and you uh, are used to that old, older application um, to sign up for your NGS account, we will be migrating those accounts to Synedia Cloud. We've got an FAQ about that on our doc site. So docs.senadia.com, if you come to the Senadia Cloud FAQ, uh, you can see here about um, you know, the, how you can prepare for the migration. Basically, you would just create a Senadia Cloud account using the same email address that you have on the old application. Now, we are planning on migrating those old application users over on January 24th. So that's in about two weeks. Look out for an email. We're going to be sending an email out over the next few days, um, just letting you know a little bit more about the migration timeline and a little bit more about what to expect. But we're excited to uh, you know, basically bring everyone into this next iteration of NGS where um, you know, you've got the full power of Synedia Cloud um, coupled with the full power of, of that um, you know, multi-regional, uh, multi-cluster uh, NGS NATS cluster. So, uh, look forward to hearing any questions you have in the chat here, and uh, definitely um, hop on over in the NGS uh, channel in our Slack as well if, if you want to connect there. Super cool, Caleb. This was a great demo. Um, thanks so much. And yeah, as Caleb said, definitely uh, ask questions in the chat, uh, in the Q&A. Afterwards, you can always come to the NAT Slack at slack.nats.io, uh, and we'll answer any of your questions. All right, thanks, thanks Byron.